Hey guys, gals, and MBs. Today I'll be making a video where we're going to be exploring a PWM pad that I'm going to be making on multiple different synths. Um, and it'll be... I'll make it the best it'll work on each synth, if that makes any sense, but you'll see. There'll be timestamps in the description for each different synth and each section of that where we'll be going for the pad itself and then effects. We won't be using any, any internal effects on any synth. We'll be using external effects, and the external effects that we'll be using are the DM101 and the Cloudburst. So the first one we're going to go with is the Minilog XD. And let me go ahead and start tuning this. So to tune, you press shift and record. It'll start its tuning process. Anyway, uh, all you'll need is a synth with two oscillators, uh, with one of the oscillators capable of shifting up uh, 700 cents or seven semitones, which will be a perfect fifth from the other oscillator. And you'll need some form of PWM with an assignable LFO to that PWM function. Mini Log XD is about as simple as it gets with the oscillator section for a good polysynth, and it can do all those things. So let's start with the uh, Mini Log, obviously. And here is an init patch, and we tuned it. So, and what we'll do first is switch the oscillator to a square. We'll switch both oscillators to a square. So yeah, they're now both set to a square. We'll bring in the second oscillator. And if this is set to an init patch, these should be set to uh, the same octaves um, each. And yeah, this will work with the Minilog XD uh, desktop version and the keyboard version. They're identical other than not having a keyboard. So yeah, um, the easiest way to uh, pitch the second oscillator up to a perfect fifth is to use the shift control and then use pitch and it'll jump in one semitone increments or 100 cent increments. So there we go. We have it set to seven semitones and it'll sound like this. And I'm going to call this pad the uh, planetarium pad because it feels like something that would be played at a planetarium, especially with the fifths. It just sounds very spacey. All right, so that really does sound pretty cool. Let's start shaping the envelope. And to do that, we're gonna have a slow attack, but not too slow. So, and that's the amp envelope, but we'll also be using the um, secondary envelope that'll be routed to the filter because we want the resonance to, you, you'll hear what it'll sound like. So we're gonna turn the cutoff all the way off so you won't hear anything. And we're gonna switch the target for the second envelope to um, the filter. And I will put it to around, let's see, 75 or so. And then we'll crank up the decay all the way on that. Now let's add some amplitude uh, envelope. Sorry, yeah, the uh, amp envelope. So the amplifier, I, I wanted to say amplitude. But yeah, we'll, we'll add some release. So like that. It's getting there, it sounds pretty cool already. Yeah, and uh, let, let's add some resonance. So let's start with no resonance. Let's add a little more attack on the filter envelope. A little more, let's make it really slow. even slower. Ah, oh, there we go. A little less resonance there. And that has such a wonderful long build to it. As you heard there, we are getting some voice stealing. That's why I have a delay. Um, Let's go ahead and now move over to the LFO. 
and we're going to assign the LFO in pretty much all these situations on all the different synths to the uh, shape. So basically how the, uh, the pulse width works. So what we're doing here is I'm going to make sure this is off really quick so we can hear it. So the shape controls the, uh, the actual width of the pulse. So this one will go through zero. So if you turn it all the way up, the, the pulse is so narrow you can't hear it. So yeah, but here, if we turn it down. You get the idea. But we want the LFO to modulate that. So let's switch this to word on shape. So we don't want to engage the LFO so high that it goes through zero. It'll sound a little weird. And now let's bring down the speed. Let's hear that with no again. All right, that sounds pretty cool. We're almost there. Now, one of the things we want to do, at least on the mini log, uh, we want to detach the um, LFO from key sync. So it'll be free running. So do that, do that, you press edit mode, you go, I think it's here. Yeah, it's the uh, one, two, three, fourth one. And then you wanna uh, keep clicking through until you go to key sync. You wanna switch that off. That makes the LFO free running. So you won't get that weird click at the beginning. It also tends to spread out the PWM quite a bit more. I just think it sounds better. Yeah, so I think that sounds gorgeous. And now we're ready to add effects to it. So the first effect we're going to be adding is the DM101. And the DM101 is just your analog delay. And we'll use the pan mode, which is a stereo. And let's listen to that. And we want to turn the uh, feedback, or the intensity in this case, up enough to like have it drone out. And that'll help with voice stealing, especially since this only has uh, four notes of polyphony. So if we do get into the voice stealing, you'll have enough pad there to even it out and just make it sound nice. So I, let's do that. I mean, yeah, you get the little break in there, but it's not as stark as not having something there padding it out. Wonderful. Let's turn off the delay so we can hear the cloud burst. The cloud burst, um, what you see is what I have it set for. Mix is about here. Modulation is fairly high up. Tone is rolled off. No pre-delay. Uh, whatever you're going to use for that. I don't use pre-delay when I'm doing pads. Um, when I'm using a pluck sound, I use pre-delay sometimes or pre-decay, depending on how they call it. We're going to turn the decay quite a bit up. This is what it sounds like just with the cloud burst. No uh, delay. Let's go back to the delay. The other thing I want to mention is I have a little bit of mod here, so. Yeah, you can hear it. We'll keep it about here. And speaking of modulation, for the LFO, I do tend to keep it in the uh, the, the um, s triangle for the alpha shape, which is the default. That's why I didn't really say anything. The default of an init patch puts this to a triangle. If you have parameter display on, you see the star there. That means whatever your patch was saved at, it'll tell you what the default was for that. 
or if you do an init patch, it'll show you what the default for the init patch was. So, yeah. All right. So let's move the two together, and we have the DM101, we have the cloud burst, and then we have the pad coming from the mini log, and let's hear that. That is Planetarium Pad on the uh, Korg Minilog XD, and uh, it, it's wonderful. That's all I can say. Um, yeah, it, it's a great pad machine. The only problem really is it's the four uh, voice polyphony. The internal effects, in my opinion, aren't the greatest. Um, you can get third-party effects, but, you know, I, I like pedals no matter what synth I use. The only real synth that has really good internal effects is the peak or the summit from Novation. Those are just amazing, but yeah, you get what you get. Um, as just a raw sound that you can put effects on, this thing is a pad monster if you can live with the four uh, voice polyphony, as you could hear from there. Uh, I just love using the fifths, the perfect fifths on the second oscillator. It, it adds so much tension to the, the overall composition that you're working on, then it resolves itself just so easily. I mean, here, here's the example. Here, just listen to this. Exactly. The, the reason I just love fifth so much on your uh, second oscillator, if you have that as an option. Yeah, so that was the Minilog XD playing Planetarium Pad. We made it pretty quickly, and we'll be moving on to a different synth, and I think the next one we'll be doing is the uh, Behringer Pro 800. All right, we're back with the Behringer Pro 800 and off of camera, what I ended up doing was tuning it because this thing takes quite a long time to tune since it's technically got 16 oscillators it has to go through and eight filters, but we're tuned and we're on an init patch. Yep, sounds kind of in tune pretty much. It's good enough for what we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, let's start with turning off the sawtooth. By default, you only have one oscillator turned on and it's in sawtooth, so we should get nothing if that's turned off. And then we wanna turn on the uh, square wave. We have pulse width here. In the middle, it's, yeah, it's set to like the widest. But yeah, don't worry about that yet. And now, the few things that we're gonna have to do in the configuration menu are very important here. We need to go into the um, performance or whatever, the perf menu, and click six here, and we wanna switch it to, until we see oscillator B frequency pot mode, and we're gonna turn oscillator B into the ability for the frequency to do semitones. By default, it does octaves. So we wanna switch it over to, uh, for it to say semi. It looks like it says semi, but it's an M, so yeah. Now we can tune it properly, and we'll wanna change the filter behavior, or sorry, the envelope behavior, because the envelopes are kind of weird on this. Uh, they were on the original Profit 600 this is based on as well. So we want the VCA envelope shape to be slow exponential, so what we wanna do is do S, this is supposed to be an X, so slow exponential. And we want to click this over until we see VCF envelope shape, and we also want to set that to slow exponential. So, yeah, that'll be important so it doesn't die off uh, the way we don't want it to. But All right. 
So let's get started with shaping it. Let's turn on oscillator B. So if it was already off, you need to switch it like um, on like that. And then we can bring up the level. So now it's pretty thick and we have two of them. And we want to tune this. This unfortunately does not show in semitones what the, what it actually is. So you'll have to do it by ear or you'll have to just take the value. So you want it around the eight. And I've been doing this so much uh, that, yeah, obviously I, I, I know what a fifth sounds like. Uh, you, you'll get used to it. You'll, you'll get that sound. It'll sound very specific and then you'll know what a fifth sounds like. But yeah, so that's on. Um, let's it, let's adjust the amplifier envelope first. So we want to make it a slow build up. So we want to have the attack up. The default settings for decay and sustain. Don't worry about those. Okay, that's a nice slow build up. And then we we'll want the release probably around the same. Less release. A little less release again. We don't want too much voice stealing, even though we have double the voices of the mini log here. We can hear it be a little bit out of tune. You can retune it. I'm not going to go through that just right now, but it still sounds pretty cool. Uh, so now we're going to back down the filter again, and we're going to use the filter envelope because this also has really nice sounding resonance. And especially since both on the Minilog XD and on this synth, the resonance doesn't cut bass like almost at all. So yeah, let's turn the cutoff all the way down. Nothing again. Then what we're going to do is we're going to engage the envelope amount for the filter. So... Yeah, we got to do it. We'll do it around there. This is a little different because then now you have to set it to do its thing. All right, so now this is the filter envelope right here. Okay. Alright, what we'll want to do here is set the decay all the way to 10. Let's add a little more of the envelope amount. I'm going to back down the uh, sustain to zero. So we're going to get a sharp rise and then it's going to taper off. If you can hear that, it'll get very sharp and open and then it'll back out. And that'll sound really cool with effects later. All right, that sounds pretty cool. And now let's add some resonance. Let's back down the envelope amount a little more. It's definitely getting there. I mean, we do have a little bit of bass cut, but it's not that bad. It's not like other synths. Actually, I don't really hear any bass cut. That could just be the pulse width uh, or the pulse. Either way, I think it's starting to sound good. Maybe a little less resonance, so it doesn't sound a little more filter envelope. All right, that sounds cool. So now we're gonna go to the LFO section here and we want the pulse width destination to be uh, PWA and B. So oscillator A, B pulse width is going to be 
um, modulated by the LFO. And since we don't go through zero, we can turn up the initial amount quite a bit. And we want to change the shape to the top one, which I think by default is a, uh, I think it is a triangle. Now let's turn up the speed. There we go. Turn the resonance down just a little more. Sounding really good, and let's hear it with the delay now. Again, we have this in the pan mode. We have the uh, feedback up quite a bit. We have the delay time on maximum. We have a little bit of modulation. And let's hear it just with the cloudburst. Back down the filter envelope just a little more. There we go. And now let's do them both together. Again, another amazing planetarium pad there. I think it sounds great. Let's do a quick tune really quick. Uh, we'll hold down tune until it starts to go, and then it'll go for a quick tune, and then we can hear what that sounds like. Um, yeah, so I love the sound of this synth. It, it's pretty great, and it's tuned for the quick tune. There we go, that sounds pretty good. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so again, uh, showing you on a different synth, the Pro 800 can make a wonderful PWM pad again with the planetarium pad that we're working on here. So I guess we'll move on to another synth, and the next synth will be the Cobalt 8 by Modal. All right, I am back with the Cobalt 8, and uh, I, I just recently got this. It's a new addition to my synths. I think it sounds awesome. This is, uh, I will put a disclaimer, this is my second unit. I've had some display issues. Both units that I got that are different serial numbers, um, like quite a bit different. They're like 100 off from each other. They have um, a dead pixels basically on the screen or some kind of pixel defect. It's not the uh, protector. The other one didn't even come with a protector on it, and it still had the issue. And I've noticed some used units out there that have some pixel defects uh, across them, which is very weird because I have an Argon 8, and that one was pretty much perfect out of the factory. 
So don't know what's happening there. I know that our uh, modal is having some supply and monetary issues. So I don't know how, I hope they'll be around with us longer, but I got the cobalt because it's unique. It sounds really good and it makes making patches easy. So yeah, just be aware of the little issues I've had with the build quality. The uh, rest of the build quality is fine, but I can recommend this as a good sounding synth and it has a really good editor. Um, again, though, if the company does have a issue where they're not going to be around for much longer, don't expect the editor to be updated. Don't expect you to be able to get the firmware updates. This came with version one on it, though this is like a newer batch of them. So if you get one, make sure you update it to the latest firmware. This is version two. Anyway, let me stop rambling about the synth itself and let's make that planetarium pad on it. So we're going to start with an init patch. So to do that, you just hold init here. If I'm a little sloppy at this, it's because it's, it's still a new synth. And we start with sine waves. All right, and we wanna switch the algorithm here. Let me use my left hand so you can see. We're gonna switch over until we get to PWM. And to control PWM, it is A1 here to change the pulse width. You'll need to know that because we're going to assign the LFO to that. The LFO sign here is a little co uh, more complex because you can do so much more. And then this is the super cool part. We're not going to use two oscillators. We're just going to use the one. This has two, but we're just going to use the one because there is a, it detunes it enough to have an octave and a fifth up from that octave just in one oscillator. And it is massive sounding, so we don't really need the second one. So to do that is the B1 when you're in pulse width for the algorithm. See, we get detuned there, and then we start going into intervals. So right around the 80s is when you get the fifth up, the perfect fifth up. And let's mix it up a little bit here. We're going to assign the LFO. So to assign the LFO, you click the, uh, at least in the desktop version, it, it, there's buttons, I believe, on the physical keyboard version, but this one, these are buttons as well. So you click here, you're an LFO assign, and I want to assign it to A1 here. So we're going to turn it to around probably 35 or so. That's the depth. We're not going to hear anything yet. Now click LFO1 again to lock in the assign. Let's turn the rate of the LFO up. Let's go into the shift mode so we can change the shape of the LFO. Make sure we're a triangle. That is not a triangle. I guess it is a triangle. Oh, it is a triangle. It looks kind of like a sawtooth, but it's not. It's good enough. Okay, and what we're gonna do now that we're still in the shift mode is we're gonna change the mode to free, just like we did on the mini log. So the alpha is now free running. Turn off the shift mode so we can change the rate again. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, Let's go in, um, let's just go here. What we wanna do is we already have a menu open. The menu's a little awkward on this. This is easier with the editor, but we're doing it straight on. So what we wanna do is we want to find the oscillator. We wanna swap down here and we wanna switch it to free run. And we also wanna turn this to a free run oscillator so this sounds more analog-y, I guess. I just think it sounds better this way. So, yeah. All right, so we have that out of the way. Let's start shaping our our envelope. Um, oh, we also wanna change this, go to filter. We're gonna change the filter here to be, let's change the filter to a, we want it on an L24 dB low pass, which is a ladder 24 dB because we're gonna need to use a bit of drive and resonance. So now the morph control in this mode becomes the drive control, resonance is still resonance, and cutoff is obviously cutoff. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. So 
let's work on the envelopes now. What we want to do is we want to switch over to the en amp envelope and let's make it a slow attack. And we want to release it nice and slow. Okay, fantastic. So now let's click here to go into the filter envelope. We're going to use the filter envelope again. So let's turn the filter all the way down. Nothing. And we want to turn the depth up the uh, filter envelope up now that we're in filter envelope mode. We'll turn it to 47 or so. Maybe 50. The attack is now up, and we have some release. Sounds pretty cool. Let's add a little bit of resonance. Cool. And now, like I said, morph is now drive, so let's drive it up. Right around 43 is good. Maybe a little less. Let's turn about 33, I guess. All right, and I feel that sounds pretty good. And now let's add the effects. Let's add the uh, DM101 in pan mode again. If you want more explanation of how these are set, uh, watch the mini log portion of this video and go back there. Uh, but yeah, let's turn on the cloud burst. And now let's add the two together. For a VA synth, I think that sounds absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and, and other than a little bit of the issues that I've had with the overall the uh, choice of components for the screen, this thing is pretty dang good. Yeah. All right. So that kind of wraps up how you can make a uh, PWM pad sound on multiple different synths. If you want to hear this pad made with some other synths, uh, go ahead and give me a comment. I can pull out some other synths. I can do this on uh, a few wavetable synths I have, and we can hear what that sounds like. We could probably bring out the, uh, what is it, the, um, geez, uh, I'm having, oh, the Hydra synth. Yeah, I was trying to think of what it's called. We could do it on the Hydra synth. We could do it on the 1010 Music, the uh, red, what is it, the Fireball. I was going to call it the red drop, but that's the yellow drop. We could do it on the fireball and we might be able to, you know what? We could possibly do this on the, uh, op six as well, since you can kind of do some VA square wave stuff with that. If you want to see that in another video, because this is already going to be very long, it's going to be over 30 minutes for these three synths. Then we'll do that in a different video, but I thought we would do analog and analog style synths for this one. So this is VA and the other two synths we used were completely analog. We used an analog effect here and obviously a very good digital reverb. Yeah, I hope you liked this video. I hope it got you excited about sound design and just all you could do just with simple pulse width modulation, for instance. 
and the ability to tune an oscillator up a fifth from another oscillator. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. If you like these kind of videos, give me a thumbs up.